Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie for Reason TV. We are in Las Vegas at Freedom Fest, and we are talking to the author George Gilder, certainly one of the more controversial and influential authors of the past 40 years, really. George, thanks for talking with well, us. Well, great to be here. Your latest book is The Israel Test. Right. What is The Israel Test? The Israel Test is one's response to people who excel you mm -hmm. in some field. Uh, to, during the most of the 20th century, the Israel test has been the Jewish test because mm -hmm. Jews uh, created much of, uh, of world science and mm -hmm. technology, won the Second World War through the right. Manhattan Project. So the Jews uh, have always punched above their weight, but you're not, this isn't the Jewish test, it's the Israel test. This is the test. Israel test. Today, uh, Israel distills the genius of the Jews. And, and uh, is a vital asset for the United States because it can't afford all the indulgences and, uh, and uh, debt and uh, crazy green policy and uh, well, and this is born, phobia. It's and, born out of the necessity that Israel is everywhere surrounded by enemies, most of whom won't even acknowledge its right to exist. By the same token, you're a huge free market advocate. Yep. Israel is also a very socialist country. Uh, reasonably, but it's, yep. it's uh, moved more radically toward mm -hmm. the right than virtually any other country in the world. Its current government is a supply side uh, mm -hmm. uh, free market operation that uh, operates under the gun, so it has a big defense effort, but yeah. it's essentially uh, drastically reduced taxes, tax rates, mm -hmm. it's uh, deregulated most of its economy, it's deregulated its entire financial sector, it's deregulated its pension system, mm -hmm. uh, previously was uh, totally run by the history group, right. the big uh, public labor so union, now it's uh, yielding $400 million a month right. into the private sector finance uh, What What explains domain. Jewish achievement and, uh, and Israel, Israeli achievement? Well, uh, Jews and, for centuries have been right. uh, banished from uh, owning land or, or even uh, many forms of property right. and have been driven into intellectual pursuits. Right. And they have refined those intellectual pursuits and now we're in an economy of mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Israelis have adapted mm -hmm. to uh, the global of eco economy of mind better than any other ethnic group. So it's, it's really a kind of cultural evolution. I mean, yep. not, of, not necessarily of Jews choosing, but they were forced to, uh, yep. you know, they were kicked out of England, they were kicked out of Spain, they were kicked out of anywhere and they developed a, uh, a culture that really privileged education and entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. And, also, and in Israel, of course, the a million Russians who had uh, worked under a communist regime mm -hmm. and were virtually prohibited from doing anything material or in manufacturing because mm -hmm. that was totally socialized. Exactly. So those, gu those guys f were forced into software algorithms mm -hmm. and mathematics and uh, a million of them came to uh, uh, Israel and just spurned yeah. all the socialist indulgences and fantasies that previously governed Israeli society. So uh, what's the, I mean, if that's why they're doing well, how do, how do we adapt that, say, to the United States or to Western Europe or to South America or to China? Well, elect a supply side regime. Yeah. I mean, uh, Bibi Netanyahu uh, went to MIT and then uh, uh, went and worked for the Boston Consulting Group at the very time it was providing the foundations of supply side economics. Supply Experience side curve. economics is going to make us all uh, a little bit Jewish, or all right. I mean, no? But I mean, <laughs> what, but what does that mean in terms of? Uh, you know, if, we, if we've got to get sharper with our minds, how is supply-side economics going to, how is that going to step in for thousands of years of cultural evolution? Because uh, uh, it focuses on the mind. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, capitalism is based on kaput, the head. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's uh, the creative uh, form of economics. Okay. It, uh, it uh, focuses on what makes human beings unique mm -hmm. rather than uh, our common 
uh, prurient interests mm -hmm. and morbid fears and anxieties. It focuses on our curiosities and aspirations and creativity. And uh, creativity always comes as a, as a surprise to us. Uh, and so it can't be planned. Well, one of the things, uh, you know, speaking about supply side economics, you wrote Wealth and Poverty, which is generally considered the Bible of the supply side economics. It emerged in the late 70s as a major bestseller, major influence on Ronald Reagan's uh, economic policies. Part of what you talked about in that book is how uh, entrepreneurs are part of a gift economy. I mean, you helped yeah, revive yeah. the Marcel Mauss uh, yeah, yeah. idea of the gift economy. Talk a little bit about that, and, and do you still believe that? Yeah, sure. Uh, entrepreneurs have to invest, they have to give, they have to create before there's any assured response to their creations. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no uh, demand for uh, new innovations. Uh, they, uh, if, if you could demand innovation, uh, you wouldn't, uh, socialism would work. You so could. it's, I mean, it's, it's a fallacy, and we, we saw this with the iPad and the iPod and the uh, iPhone before that, people yeah. saying like, oh, of course everybody wants the iPad, we've oh. always wanted it, but yeah. in fact, there was no demand for the iPad. That's right, and, and, and that's true about all innovations. That's mm -hmm. why, uh, a uh, supply side by unleashing individual creativity uh, creates wealth and progress now, and all other systems uh, sup suppress uh, wealth and so, progress. But now let's talk about supply side economics because that's that's in, uh, you know, uh, supply side economics and starve the beast kind of got commingled in a way that I think has tarnished supply side economics in no, terms of... I had nothing to do with starve the right, beast. Right, but I let's know, uh, I, explain I, what you're saying I is... I think it is a beast yes. but I, and it should be starved but uh, I, 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 one of my insights mm -hmm. that I saw was the best way to measure uh, the success of tax policy is how much government spending rises. Mm -hmm. And uh, countries with low or declining tax rates increase their government spending three times as fast as governments with high or rising tax rates. Uh, and that's because they grow six times faster. Right. That means government is growing smaller as a part of a bigger economy. But And government has more money to spend, though, in absolute terms. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, let's talk about some of your other books because, I, you know, for me, as a as a longtime reader of your work, uh, you know, it seems that your books get split into a kind of Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde uh, approach, where there are books that are about social issues, where you're a pretty rock rib social conservative. Mm -hmm. Books like Sexual Suicide or Invisible Man, uh, the Visible Man. Visible Man, excuse me, yeah, okay. uh, and the uh, the revision of uh, of sexual suicide as uh, men in marriage, uh, and then there are the books that are uh, pretty utopian, and we can argue whether or not they're <laughs> utopian or they're descriptive. Uh, but things like Life After Television, yeah. Telecosm, and whatnot, and you were one of Wired's great uh, original poster boys, cover boys. How do you square sexual suicide, for instance, argued in the early 70s in response to a kind of breaking down of traditional gender roles, that we were, we were going to destroy our society, uh, and yet then you were also later promulgating a kind of series of technologies that would allow us both to indulge our wildest fantasies but reconfigure ourselves almost independent of bodies. Uh, does, do you see a, a, a conflict or a tension in your no. work? So how no, do you square those circles? It's just uh, the family is critical to raising civilized, creative, responsible mm -hmm. uh, people who can uh, ex exploit freedom and yeah. enjoy freedom and how, fulfill how are you themselves in freedom. How are you uh, defining the family in that sense? Uh, the uh, nuclear family, a mm -hmm. man and woman and uh, children is so the where, nuclear So how family. do you feel about uh, New York legalizing gay marriage? Is that a good I, I thing or a bad thing? I think it's a bad thing. I don't Why think, is it a bad thing? I mean, g gays can do what they want to do, but uh, I don't w believe that, uh, it, you know, now uh, bisexuality is supposedly a uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, factor. Duh. I yeah. mean, if uh, the fact is all of us are bisexual in various right. ways, it's this whole idea that 
that homosexuality resembles race in any respect is nonsense. The whole idea that uh, male homosexuality resembles lesbianism in any respect is nonsense. And so this whole idea well, of could, gay but, marriage is just a parody. It's, it's, a, it's an absurd well, uh, concept. But, uh, do you think that, uh, you know, a, uh, say two uh, gay men who are married, would they be able to create a stable family situation that would raise children who would be flourishing? who would flourish or oh, be granted. Sure. Yeah. If, if individuals can do yeah. all kinds of things. Right. It's, it's different when you're establishing principles that are going to govern the society. And the, uh, the chief problem with gay marriage to me, I, I don't particularly care what mm -hmm. uh, they choose to do, uh, but uh, the result will be teaching young kids uh, that uh, gay sex is just as good as any other sex, mm -hmm. which is... Now, uh, have you ever had gay sex? Do you uh, know? Is it as good? Or? Uh, I've, I've, I know enough. I've spent <laughs> a long time studying this yeah. subject, and, and I know about gay sex yeah. more than most of the people who talk about okay. it with such authority. And uh, it's, uh, it's not... Um, uh, it, it is not procreative, mm -hmm. it uh, cannot uh, sustain the race, it, uh, and uh, young boys are quite uh, responsive to it, mm -hmm. and so it's a mistake to uh, open this mm -hmm. door for confused uh, boys who have, who have yet uh, crystallized their sexual mm -hmm. Uh, so, I mean, you orientation, and, and it's, a, it's an addictive form of behavior, mm -hmm. and recent studies show that uh, during the, until about 21, our brains are very responsive mm -hmm. to various forms of addiction, and the earlier they're inculcated, the more... Uh, so, gay, uh, uh, gay predisposition or, uh, is, is really a learned behavior. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 gay, gay uh, gayness is about fifty percent genetic, like okay. everything else, like uh, alcoholism, uh, any kind of uh, of uh, behavior well, of this sort is, as shown by twin studies, about fifty percent genetic, and the other fifty percent is is uh, environment yeah. and uh, choice well, and will. Well, don't you think that 50% of twin studies are just complete BS, though? Well, uh, uh, twin studies are about yeah. the best we right. access we can get well, to these uh, forms of causation. To, uh, to, uh, to shift to the other emphasis yeah. in your work about yeah. the kind of ways in which technology uh, you know, are transformative. Uh, life after television, you essentially foresaw the, not not the internet per se, it existed, but the flourishing of well, it. The World as, Wide Web of yeah. Glass and Light, I That's talked right. about. Yeah, as, as yeah. And the, uh, when you were in discussing Before telecomputers. the World Wide Web. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, has it paid off on your vision uh, that it was going to reinvigorate? I mean, I remember reading that book, and one of the things that was fascinating is that you, you anticipated the arguments that this was going to atomize people or, or yeah. push people apart. And in fact, you, you were saying that it would help to create new forms of community, but also invigorate traditional forms. Do you yeah. feel that that has been sure. borne out? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, uh, it creates a huge new avenue for all forms of human expression. And that's a good thing. And that's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, and, and the medium- I'm libertarian, I, yeah. I don't- If the uh, web is, is inherently libertarian or it's a decentralized uh, mechanism or framework or grammar that allows us to speak a different language, yeah. I mean, are we already in a libertarian world then? Uh, I, we are, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that, that is true. That, that, that is the impact. It overcomes the tyranny of broadcast, top-down, mm -hmm. hierarchical, uh, uh, cultural systems. Do you miss uh, the days when uh, you you could uh, feel secure that not only you but everybody else had seen Walter Cronkite no. speaking in the news? I've never had a TV in yeah. my home all my life, so I have no idea uh, what, what do about you think, Walter Cronkite. What do you think? I hardly know what he looks like. <laughs> What do you think explains the nostalgia that you find among many conservatives, but uh, perhaps more surprisingly among many uh, liberals or leftists for that day when people were not as free to express themselves? Uh, they want the comforts of uh, bland uh, and uh, uncreative society. 
What, what do you think is, I mean, you, you anticipated the, uh, you know, the impact of the World Wide Web. You talked about- I said it would lead to a golden age of text. Yeah. And it it's did. Certainly true, yeah. yeah. Forget the Gutenberg yeah. galaxy. I yeah, mean, yeah, we're right. living in it now. I, I think, yeah. Um, so what do, you, what do you anticipate, or what do you see as the next huge transformative uh, kind of technological development? I, I'm, uh, uh, I think that uh, every Moore's Law uh, means that every 10 years uh, there's a complete transformation of c computer architecture. Mm -hmm. And uh, the change that's emerging is cloud computing, mm -hmm. and uh, which means that anybody anywhere can have access to total supercomputer capabilities mm -hmm. or even trans supercomputer, ultra computer capabilities. And I've got a company in Los Angeles called Otoy mm -hmm. that is. Uh, uh, won several Academy Awards mm -hmm. for its light stage technology, but also is uh, uh, building the world's fastest computer out of clusters of mm -hmm. graphics processors and uh, that can be uh, a petaflop machine uh, anywhere uh, around the world, and uh, which can uh, uh, mean that uh, your teleputer can, uh, or your, which is your smartphone, right, as right. It, they call it, can uh, do anything that a supercomputer can mm -hmm. do. Are you you're optimistic about the future? Yes. Yeah. Yes, so what are, what are the things that can that can ruin the future for us? Well, we got an absolutely uh, stupid third worldly president at the moment who wants mm -hmm. to reduce the United States to some third world backwater. And, uh, when really you say that, what, I mean, how, in how do you response mean? to the upper class intellectuals who, who have, uh, you know, uh, paled over with a cast of green goo, hmm. uh, and I, I think it's, uh, I think the um, environmental movement and the mm -hmm. effort to suppress all energy production is virtually vandalistic, mm -hmm. and so I, I think this is the worst president I've ever seen. Okay. The why, worst why do you call him movement. third worldly, though? I mean, it, it, because he he wants to bring us down to the level. Yeah. Or, yeah, does yeah, he, he does. does he want to, or is it he that did. will be the effect you're uh, saying? I think. I mean, does he hate America, or is he just he, misguided? Well, he, he he resents capitalism. He resents the. Uh, wealth that capitalism mm -hmm. generates. He, he resents the inequalities that are indispensable to any creative mm -hmm. and free society and what do, are what manifested do you, in What do you base society. that on uh, uh, other than the way that you see his policies working? Well, is that, it, is he, that a psycho uh, history or a psychobiography? Well, it, it's just evident to me. I mean, he, mm -hmm. he studied with Edward Said and mm -hmm. Rashid Khalidi was mm -hmm. his press secretary. Uh, uh, Reverend Wright was his preacher. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Ayers and Bernadine Dorn were his pals. Uh, an intellectual. Will that uh, win you know, out? He just, he just uh, is a hardcore leftist. That's mm -hmm. what he is. Mm -hmm. And he may escape it. He may transcend it as he uh, proceeds. But so far, he's totally failed. I mean, I mean what he's doing to the U.S. energy economy today is, uh, it could, you know, couldn't be done by a nuclear attack. <laughs> I mean, it's it's devastating and destructive, and it's uh, and it uh, and he's got to be thrown out as a result of this. Do you see anybody, uh, you know, within the Republican Party, or uh, you know, not even that? I mean, even in the Democratic Party, or w who are the people who are making the the right counter arguments? To this, because it's not like uh, you know, I, I can't imagine that anybody on the Republican side of the aisle is inspiring you to say, "Yeah, they're really getting the next generation of technology well, or the next I, generation." I think of I think any of the Republicans are are, um, are a lot better. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, if Newt wasn't such a jerk, I would. He's the smartest and uh, has the well, what best happened ideas. To him? Because he was obviously he, somebody he heavily polls. influenced People, by him. These uh, polls is, the, uh, is demand side uh, mm -hmm. transcribed into politics. You're mm -hmm. constantly looking at a rear view mirror. So uh, there are two really destructive forces in our politics. And one is polls, which uh, mm -hmm. is uh, reduces everybody to a blithering idiot and following polls. And the other is our campaign finance laws that uh, currently uh, allow special interest groups to spend any amount they want, but uh, reduce uh, individuals who actually are, are real 
entities in mm -hmm. politics to 2,000 bucks a campaign. Yeah. And, and th this is a major factor in our politics. And the combination of polls and special interests has what has really brought our current uh, system to its current uh, a flight. A final question. Uh, you described yourself as a libertarian. What, what, what are the, what's the basic right fit for government? What should it be doing? Oh, they, they've got a uh, d defense and, uh, c uh, um, you know, law, upholding the law. Uh, you do need a structure of law in mm -hmm. order to have a free economy. Right. But uh, information theory is what I'm really working on more than anything mm -hmm. else these days. And it shows that you need a low entropy carrier, that is with no surprises, mm -hmm. to uh, bear high entropy uh, creations. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this comes from uh, telecommunications mm -hmm. analysis, uh, Claude Shannon's vision of telecommunications, but it applies across the board. So you need regularities in the law mm -hmm. in order to unleash uh, creativity and enterprise. So should, should the government be engaging social issues the way that it does, or should that be something that is hashed out in the marketplace of ideas and but, lifestyle? Uh, I mean, yes, uh, it should be um, hashed out in the marketplace of ideas rather than uh, having government. Uh, uh, I think uh, laws about uh, marriage mm -hmm. make sense. Uh, I don't, and uh, but the limited uh, set of laws mm -hmm. are um, desirable. And right. uh, uh, the real cancer of capitalism is when uh, lawyers start uh, manipulating the law in order to favor uh, litigation and conflict and, uh, and enrich lawyers. Well, George Gilder, I want to thank you very much for talking to Reason TV. Your latest book, his latest book is The Israel Test, and uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll all pass that with flying colors. I hope so. Right. It's, impor it's important. For Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie.